Welcome to this special report on C-Soup Radio. Now introducing award-winning investigative reporter Judd McElvain. This interview is based on the true stories of the last surviving member of a three-member CIA contract team known as the 231 Club. These three covert soldiers followed orders which sent them around the world to deliver weapons, money, train American allies, and sometimes eliminate its enemies. For the first time ever, a contract killer for the CIA speaks out about his assignments and the loyalty and love he had for his country and his team members. Now, some of the dates and names and places have been changed in order to protect uh, those who were his associates and the family members who are still alive. And his team called him Cowboy because of a nickname he picked up in an Arab country. Okay, now on another assignment, you were sent to Latin America to kill another foreign leader who apparently was a problem to the United States government because he was standing in the way of developing democracy for the small country that he was in. Tell me about what happened there. Well, first of all, uh, we didn't go in to eliminate uh, the leader of a foreign country. This was a man that was in a local government outside of uh, El Salvador, and he was using tactics of torture and killings to get his way. And he needed to be kicked out of the club. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, kicked out of the club? You have to understand that when the 231 Club was first formed, it was formed so that we could speak in a language that other people really wouldn't know what we were talking about. For example, if we mentioned that someone was going to be kicked out of the club, they were somebody that was going to be eliminated. If we were talking about uh, going to shoot pool and make sure you bring your pool cue, pool cue was a rifle. Uh, a handgun was a wallet. So this was our uh, way of being able to discuss things uh, without anyone really knowing what we were talking about. So it was about. your code, that's all. Exactly. It was <laughs> a language, our own language. Do you think that everybody or a lot of people in this world are evil and should be eliminated? Well, this particular person, uh, it was felt, should be eliminated. Th this was a real brain twister because the guy lived on top of a hill and he always had somebody start his car before driving and it was very difficult because the car was very well armored it had bulletproof glass it had uh, steel panels in the uh, in the doors so we had to find a way to be able to get this guy so he Michael, apparently knew there would be people looking to kill him. Oh, yes. He was well prepared for that. That was obvious. What happened was that Michael came up with a great, great idea. And the idea was to build a little gas chamber with inside the car. Uh, on some documentation I found while doing research here, it, it pointed out that you had 11 confirmed kills at that time. And that would be several, uh, what? almost 20 years ago. Do those memories haunt you? I mean, can you sleep at night? In the first few months, yeah, it was very difficult. Uh, I would see those faces of people uh, from time to time in dreams and during the day or wherever they would pop up. But after a while, you, you begin to realize that you're doing a job. And like any soldier, you're doing the job for a purpose. And uh, I believed in the purpose. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak out and tell us this amazing story. I'm Judd McElvain, the troubleshooter, and you've been listening to a special report. Thank you again for listening.